whilst over the years the Halle have provided some inspirational additionality to our core work through projects like Come and Play and through a range of special instrumental orchestral projects for our young learners. Over the years, the Halle's work has become more a part of the essential day-to-day -day work that we do with our schools. So whilst, of course, it's amazing to fill the Bridgewater Hall with Wigan kids to enjoy a Come and Play concert or a Halle for Youth concert, it's equally meaningful for us to have access to other Halle resources which are utilised locally and integrated into our daily work. I think I speak for all of the music services here in Greater Manchester and also for the Halle uh, when I say that we shared the music education journey together over many years. Um, with us learning many things from the orchestra and the orchestra learning from us. Um, because we're all just a part of a big team that cares about quality music education for all children, both now and in the future. Ravel's music sets the scene with the feeling of walking footsteps. Have a listen to the oboe and the corps anglais playing Tom Thumb's walking melody as he wanders quietly through the forest, carefully dropping his crumbs of bread. Well, I really, really liked at the, at the end um, where it was her falling into a deep, deep sleep. You could really feel it and see it. Like. Yeah, and you can also with that type of music, you can imagine it in your head. And also when um, she was pricking her finger, when I was imagining that, I could just feel how like she couldn't control her body and yeah. like she, she was just falling asleep and she couldn't control what she was doing. Uh, I like the pitch when it went high and low, me too. I like the build up at the end because the hat really gave it a magical touch. I like the contrabassoon because it really reflects how the beast would talk. Yeah, and it also reflects the personality. Definitely. In the story, Goddess Gaia takes us on a journey around the globe, showing us what humans are doing to the natural world. take this opportunity to share Hotwood Primary School's experience of taking part in a Music, Mind and Mood Halle for Youth project. The project was based around a composition from the Romantic era and a classical painting. Skillfully led by two Halle musicians, the children enjoyed the challenge to compose an abstract piece of music in the style of the composer, reflecting the images in the painting. The children thoroughly enjoyed working with students from the Northern Valley School to create a dance to complement their performance. Particularly motivational for the boys was having male role models. To visually enhance the dance, the children learned how to make imaginative costumes under the guidance of a theatrical costume designer. 
The project culmination at the Bridgewater Hall provided a unique experience for the children, allowing them to perform alongside a prestigious orchestra on stage at such a young age. The whole project was an outstanding and truly educational experience for them. Steve Pickett, I'm the Education Director of the Halle and tonight we're in Bramall High School for a performance from one of our core education programmes called the Doctor Player. We hope the, the children get the opportunity to uh, enjoy obviously the music and coming to the Halley and the Bridgewater Hall. We also hope that they get interested in playing an instrument, which after all is what we're looking for. But we're also looking to start, if you like, a child's musical journey. What may happen in these projects, we never know. But if you talk to any musician in the Halley, there's one star ping moment that got them to play a particular instrument because they heard something and so on. So we hope that our Doctor Player programme will do that for as many children across Greater Manchester as we possibly can. Anyone thought, it's such an interesting thing, he doesn't make any noise except when he talks, but when they play, he just gestures. Do his gestures matter? Would anyone like to come and try? Go on, have a go. Go on. I mean, just come and conduct the orchestra, I'll show you how. Yes, yeah, the one here. Come on then. I'll start you off, Rodrigo. You're getting the tempo. And all you've got to do is one, one, one. That's it. Beautiful. That's a lovely movement. Okay, ready, everybody? Three, four. Uh -huh. Do you see? And they play. It's easy, isn't it? Okay, when I stop, keep going. Okay, don't, don't go slow. Keep going. One, one. <laughs> all right, all right. Well done, that was brilliant. Brilliant, it's fun, isn't it? Um, so I've started to get involved with the Halle uh, originally through the um, RNCM and Halle PES scheme. I was very fortunate to be invited to come and play Mozart Clarinet Concerto Fair Movement for the Halle Schools concert, which is just such an incredible opportunity. Um, working with the Halle, I've managed to get, get so many skills um, during my time and um, I think essentially coming in to play next to such incredible musicians, just sitting around them, you gain so much information and knowledge. And yeah, I think it's just, it's been really helped me cement, cement um, what I want to do in my future. It's, it, they're such incredible musicians, it's very nice to play with them. A dinosaur rock is a fizzle and a Seashell Trust is a, a long established school, initially known as the School for the Deaf, but we have children with multi-sensory impairment, we have some children who are visually impaired, some who are orally impaired, some who are parts of both, but we welcome all of these students and their special needs because we want to teach them communication through music. I'm Chris Emerson, I'm a viola player in the Halle and I come to the Seashell Trust for uh, education projects. 
Uh, we're bringing music to um, two classes. We're trying to create a, a connection with them and, and communicate with them in a, in a different way to what they are used to. Really concentrating on, focusing on each, each of the children in turn. It's a wonderful way to, to actually make a difference with these kids because the slightest amount of music makes an enormous difference. So to be able to do that week on week and carry on and over, over the foreseeable future is a, a, a wonderful opportunity and experience. we're looking at is the way that technology can work in the sector and we, we started doing some work um, with robot orchestra and that with Siemens before um, and that conversation has developed into the idea that we perhaps could look at a device that would help the musical processes that we're working on within the homes. I'm Victoria Armstrong and I'm the founder of the Oasis Centre in Gorton. So I moved to um, Gorton 26 years ago as a student, uh, wanted cheap accommodation, um, but when I moved here I realised why it was so cheap, um, so I'd never been in a deprived community um, and uh, basically as soon as I moved in I wanted to get out, um, but then three months into my degree I became a Christian and I really felt challenged to stay here and try and make a difference. Um, so Oasis is all about being um, family to people that um, have suffered neglect and a lot of isolation in their lives so what we try and be here is a place of stability, a place of community, a place of aspirations and a place of hope for people's future. Naomi and uh, the Halle team got this place straight away. They came in, they saw what we did and they said we want to help and support you and they have provided this incredible environment where I would say the choir offers as much value as our maths and our English courses, um, as our crisis support. Um, it's, it's up there with really seeing lives being transformed. It's made me more positive, okay. more belief in, in yep. my voice. Uh, it gives you confidence, it gives you um, excitement about singing the songs and um, it's a real pleasure to be with the um, people who teach you, it's really good. And all I do is I urge people out anywhere to come and join the choir because you will enjoy the atmosphere with the choir and the people who run it. I mean you can't get any better than the Alley Orchestra one. What can you say? Although the Halle has been here in Manchester for a long time, the Halle never really has had a home. Now, with this building, the Halle really feels it has its own home, somewhere that it can that it can really put its roots down, that it can really feel special, that it can do all sorts of other things besides rehearse and play music. It can really do all the community work that it wants to do, it wants to get involved more with the people in Manchester and this is an ideal base to do it. It really feels as if it's our, our home and that our home is part of the fabric of not just um, Ancoats but Manchester, um, Manchester itself. We're, we're part of the fabric, we're part of the innards of Manchester and we feel as if we're owned by the people, local people around here, which is really lovely.
We're so fortunate to have this beautiful building for all our ensembles to work in. Um, and my favourite bit is when we get children or young people coming in for the first time and the light in the building makes them look up as they walk in the hallway. Um, also, as you go into the church, it's just so beautiful and you can see that surprise and delight in their faces. That's before we even get to making any music. St Peter's has been wonderful for the orchestra. It's made us part of the community here in Ancoats and this is such a vibrant space now since it's developed in the time we've been here from the earliest days when before the extension which was a really exciting time I and mean, it was an inspirational space then and it's even more now with the extension and we just love being part of here this square all the restaurants all the cafes the real vibe of the place Hi, I'm Ted and I'm from Cholton in Manchester and I'm in my fourth year in uh, training with the Hallowed Children's Choir. Hi, I'm Georgia and I live in Sale. I'm in year seven, so now I'm at my fourth year at Hallowed Children's Choir. So what skills does the choir give me? It, it can, teaches me to focus on uh, really making my performance really good as well as becoming really professional in the performance as uh, you need to learn that if you're going to be performing with the orchestras. After COVID restrictions ease, I'm most looking forward to doing the movement performances because they're just so much fun to do. Obviously I can see all my friends who are currently in the choir and also I can fully go back to the choir and have the entire choir performing at the same time in person which is a really magical experience. My name is Harry, I'm from Astley in Greater Manchester. I play the violin and I've been involved in the Hallow Youth Orchestra for the past year now. Being able to talk to professional musicians and play far more challenging pieces has really helped my musicality drastically improve. I've really liked getting involved with young people who like music and who share similar interests as I do. I'm really looking forward to getting back to meeting meet in person and I would definitely recommend the Halley Youth to other people. The Hello Youth Choir is full of like-minded people who are passionate about having new experiences and learning from each other and it creates a kind of familial trust between everybody. When it comes to music, I don't really have a background that's very rooted in classical music. So um, yeah, it's definitely like broadened my horizons when it comes to music. The Hallow has helped me develop lots of skills such as teamwork, communication and organisation all good skills for the choir and also important life skills. Once Covid restrictions end, I'm most looking forward to the Halle Christmas concert. Since my first Christmas concert, it has always been my kickstart into Christmas festivities and I think this year will be even more special to me as it will be my last concert before I leave for university. and I would like to offer the role of the new 
had the assistant conductor to Delia. It's extremely exciting to be here and to be receiving this. Um, yes, I am overwhelmed with the whole experience and this great privilege to take this prize. The first thing that struck me about her was that she seemed in control of herself. And it's very, very hard when you're a young conductor to be at home with yourself when you're in such a pressured situation. She seemed to me to have poise um, and she may have been terrified inside, but she didn't show it. And that gives an orchestra confidence that she will let them play. Because we can't control an orchestra unless we're in control of ourselves. And that was very remarkable in somebody so young. I, I really loved working with the youth orchestra and um, just they were so ready and so responsive to anything that I asked. This immediately felt like we had a really good report and good connection. So that was also quite a rewarding experience. I had the privilege of acting as one of the judges for the competition. And we saw many, many great talents there. And Diana surprised us with an amazing performance. Diana clearly has a bright future ahead of her, I'm sure. She had a natural way of speaking to the orchestra, as if she'd been doing it forever. And that's a great gift. Not everybody actually has that. And her conducting, above all, was very passionate. It was straight to the heart of the feeling in the music. And I think that won the orchestra over. The standard was high, um, but I just felt by the time everything had happened and we had to decide, I just knew she was the one I wanted to help. I'm really looking forward to be back at the Bridgewater Hall, to seeing and listening to the Halle as they are making music right there, making it come alive. It's such an exhilarating experience, and I'm looking forward to sharing that experience with many others very, very soon. Oh, it's very special, really, to be able to uh come down to the concert. Also, because my husband has dementia, uh, you know, and he really enjoys music. So it was really good to be able to share that experience with him. I've never been to see a classical concert before in your life, and it was a really nice experience to see it online, at home, during the pandemic. It was really cool how they did that. And now I can't wait to see one in real life when things are open again. I love this orchestra, not only for what it's done for me personally, but for what it does for the city of Manchester, its youngsters and its adults. It's an organisation of which I think we can all be very proud. Mm -hmm.